Welcome to a review of the American Tier 6 battleship, the USS New Mexico. Nicknamed the Queen in service, she represents the point where the United States battleship line finally comes into its own after a string of disappointing ships before it. Armed with 12 14-inch guns and with enough armor to shrug off anything else on her tier, the USS New Mexico is my favorite ship in the game. So let's take a look at the history of the New Mexico. All three ships in the New Mexico-class battleships were laid down in 1915 during the First World War, with the New Mexico herself being laid down on the 14th of October 1915 in the New York Naval Yard, launched on the 13th of April 1917, and commissioned into the U.S. Navy on the 20th of May 1918. The New Mexicos were part of the U.S. Standard Battleship Line. Following the launch of HMS Dreadnought, every other major capital ship in the world had been rendered obsolete overnight. The standards were a series of 12 ships in five classes commissioned by the U.S. Navy to bring the U.S. Navy up to date with the latest advances. The New Mexicos were the third sh class of ships in this group. All of the standard battleships were built the same 21 knot speed and 600 meter turning circle to in order to keep the line of battle coherent during maneuvers. The New Mexicos were evolutions of the basic design that had begun with the Nevada class in 1912. The main points of the design were the use of triple gun turrets and fewer of them to minimize citadel length, oil-fired boilers, as well as an all-or-nothing armoring scheme. The all-or-nothing armoring scheme emphasized protection over the absolute vital areas of the ship, the magazines, the boilers, the main guns, and the bridge, while sacrificing everything else to incoming enemy fire. I'll have another video hopefully up soon that'll go into detail about the all-or-nothing armoring scheme, but suffice it to say, it made the New Mexico's exceptionally tough ships effectively immune to 14-inch shell fire at any practical combat range. The New Mexico did innovate some, introducing the clipper bow to the U.S. battleships to improve sea keeping, and the New Mexico herself was the first turboelectric battleship in the world. The advantage of turboelectric drive is much greater fuel efficiency for the ship, an increase of 20% in the New Mexico's case, as well as allowing you to further subdivide your engine compartments to reduce your susceptibility to flooding. The downside of turboelectric drive is the drive system now weighs and takes up significantly more volume inside the ship. While this is not much of a concern with the standard battleships with their low 21 knots top speeds, this was a concern when the United States decided to increase the top speed of its battleships, leading to turboelectric drive eventually being phased out. I'll have a further video in going into detail with turboelectric drive sometime in the future. Three ships of this class were built, the USS New Mexico, the USS Mississippi, and the USS Idaho. All three ships of the class served admirably through World War II, and all three sisters were present in Tokyo Bay to witness the Japanese surrender on September 2, 1945. Uh, 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 sorry, spoilers there for World War II. The New Mexico herself was completed too late to take an active role in the First World War. Her inaugural assignment was to escort President Wilson across the Atlantic to the Versailles Peace Conference, ending the First World War. After this, she set sail for the west coast via the Panama Canal, becoming the flagship of the newly minted U.S. Pacific Fleet on the 16th of July, 1919. The next 12 years were relatively quiet as the New Mexico spent her time in training exercises, but this is where she earned her nickname, the Queen, for both her position as the flagship and her exemplary marks in gunnery, engineering, and general battle readiness. Following her training exercises, she was modernized at the Philadelphia Naval Yard from March 1931 to January of 1933. The modernization included the removal of her cage-style mass and the construction of a more modern superstructure. She had eight 5-inch anti-aircraft guns installed, replacing a quartet of 3-inch anti-aircraft guns she was built with. Torpedo blisters and additional deck armor were installed, and finally her turboelectric drive was removed and a conventional geared turbine set, donated from USS Florida, was installed like the other two ships of her class. This made the New Mexico the fastest battleship in the fleet, but she was still a whole knot and a half slower than the slowest Japanese battleship. That disparity in speed eventually gave birth to the North Carolina and South Dakota classes of battleship, culminating in the Iowas with their 33 knot top speed. After this modernization, she was returned to the Pacific Fleet. From December of 1940 until May of 1941, the New Mexico was stationed in Pearl Harbor due to rising tensions with the Empire of Japan. After this time, she left Pearl Harbor for the Atlantic, where she spent the next six months conducting neutrality patrols and escorting convoys across the Atlantic. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the New Mexico was transferred back to the Pacific Fleet. 
During an overhaul in May of 1942 to August of the same year at Puget Sound Naval Yard in Washington, she landed more of her secondary battery to make room for more anti-aircraft guns. From December of 1942 to May of 1943, she escorted convoys to and from the Fiji Islands, after which she patrolled the Southwest Pacific. In May of 1943, she joined the campaign to retake the Aleutian Islands. In June of 1942, the Japanese had occupied the islands of Atu and Kiska in the Aleutian Islands. There's some debate as to whether this was done purely as a diversion for the Battle of Midway, or if the Japanese were attempting to secure the northern flank of their empire. Regardless, the Japanese had taken two islands, and the U.S. meant to take them back. The Battle of Atu was a bloody one. 2,900 Japanese soldiers had taken up position on the island, and 15,000 American troops were sent to root them out. The two-week-long battle saw 549 U.S. troops killed, 1,148 wounded, and another 2,100 men evacuated for disease and cold-related injuries. Of the defenders, only 29 men were captured alive. The New Mexico was slated to support the attack on Kiska. Due to the heavy casualties during the Atu Island campaign, nearly 35,000 troops were prepared to invade, and the New Mexico and the rest of the ships taking part shelled the island for three weeks prior to the landing troops. However, when they landed, they found the island completely abandoned. The Japanese had pulled out two weeks prior to the landing, and after only one week of shelling. Following her Alaskan gunnery practice, the New Mexico again returned to Puget Sound for another refit, primarily having the latest radar sets installed. And in October of 1943, she sailed for Pearl Harbor to practice for the invasion of the Gilbert Islands. During the invasion of the Gilberts, she conducted shore bombardments and provided an AA screen for the transports and carriers. In January of 1944, she took part of the, the invasion of the Marshall Islands, bombarding shore positions as needed until the end of February. In June, she joined the shelling of Tinian before sailing for Saipan and Guam. After the invasion of the Mariana Islands, she was put into Bremerton for overhaul from October to November. At the end of 1944, she was once again riding shotgun on convoys around the Philippines, protecting them from daily air attack. In January of 1945, she aided in the taking of Luzon by shelling shore positions prior to the invasion. It was during this bombardment that she came under heavy kamikaze attack. One of the suicide planes struck the ship in the bridge, killing her captain, Robert Fleming, as well as Lieutenant General Herbert Lumsden, the British Army representative to Douglas MacArthur's army, as well as 28 others and wounding another 87. The British commander of the Pacific Fleet barely escaped. The crew kept the ship fighting through all this, controlling the damage and tending to the wounded while supporting the troops going ashore. She returned to Port Harbor for extensive repairs before taking part in the bombardment of Okinawa in March of 1945. And it was around Okinawa that New Mexico got her first and only ship-to-ship -ship engagement, where she destroyed eight Shinyo suicide boats in May. At Okinawa, she was also attacked and hit by two kamikazes. Fifty-four men were killed and another 119 wounded. The fires were quickly brought under control, and the ship was able to put into Leyte for repairs. After those repairs, she was back at it, practicing for the invasion of Japan. But before that could take place, the atomic bombs ended the war, and then New Mexico, along with her two sister ships, sailed into Tokyo Harbor to witness the formal surrender of the Empire of Japan on September 2, 1945. All told, the New Mexico earned six battle stars during World War II. Following the surrender on September 6, the New Mexico set sail for home, arriving in Boston Harbor on the 17th of October. She remained in Boston until she was decommissioned a year later on July 16, 1946. On February 25, 1947, she was struck from the Naval Register at the ripe old age of 29 and sold for scrap for the princely sum of $382,000. All right, that's enough of a history lesson. Let's take a look at the New Mexico in-game. Here she is, fully upgraded with a couple of additional modules put in for good measure, but let's take a look at the upgrade tree first. All right. Here's where you start off, and I'm going to highly recommend that you go for the engine upgrade and the fire control system upgrades first. Stock, this ship has an 18.5 knot top speed and a 14.2 kilometer range with her guns. That is just intolerable. Both of those stats are really going to punish you when you first start to uh, grind on this ship. Once you get those, make your way down the hull line, going from the B to the C. The ship gets much better anti-aircraft firepower, plus torpedo protection and some upgrades to her health points as you go down the hulls. But save those for last, because that's top speed and that gun range is just brutal. 
for modules. On the first one, I went for main armaments modification one to increase the durability of my guns. I went for the artillery plotting room mod one to increase the range further. Uh, normally, I wouldn't go and try to use upgrades to handle, to cover weaknesses ships. I prefer to accentuate strengths, but there are no armor upgrades, and the range of these guns is really pitiful. Next, I went for damage control system mod one to reduce the uh, likelihood of fire and flooding. Again, one of the biggest weaknesses of this ship is that, uh, well, of any battleship really, is getting set on fire. So anything that can reduce that fire chance is good. And for the last modification, I'd definitely go with damage control system modification two. Um, this ship already has a very good rudder shift time. And honestly, because of the low speed, you want to keep that throttle at either three quarters or full most of the time. You're not going to be, you're not going to be trying to dodge incoming fire with your throttle. So I would definitely go with the control system just to reduce the time that you're going to spend on fire. Even though, as a battleship, burning is a lifestyle choice. All right. Now let's take a look at a few of the numbers of this ship. First of all, let's take a look at the hallmark of the New Mexico, her survivability. 53,200 hit points is not the highest number of hit points at your tier, but it's a good number, uh, especially when you consider her armor. That 343 millimeter is her main belt armor that stretches from just in front of her fore turret barbette all the way to just behind her aft turret barbette. That is 13 and a half inches of USD grade A American steel protecting her citadel, as well as nice solid fore and aft caps on that citadel and an armored deck that is about three inches thick Long story short, you are not going to be citadeling the New Mexico. The only time you're going to be able to do that is when the ship gives you a nice broad flat side of the ship and you're at medium to short range. That's really the New Mexico's strength, is her armor. Also, something you'll notice is that B-hull upgrade takes you up to 42% damage reduction on incoming torpedoes. That is huge and makes this ship able to eat far more torps than you normally would expect in a battleship. You still don't want to, but if you have to, it's not going to be as brutal as it otherwise would be. Maneuverability-wise, the ship maxes out at 21 knots, and I do mean maxes out. Uh, your turning circle is actually a fairly tight one at 640 meters, and your rudder shift time is 13 and a half seconds. What this means is the ship will get into a turn and then make a pretty tight turn compared to other ships of its tier. Really, the Warspite is the only other ship that's going to be able to outmaneuver the New Mexico. Finally, or next up, the concealment. 14.2 kilometers on the surface and 11.3 kilometers from the air is actually one of the stealthier uh, concealment ratings for tier 6 battleships. And you need to use that to the full advantage because with your slow speed, you're not going to be able to force an engagement with anybody. You're going to be much better off if you can just pop up at the last second as close as possible before you open fire on your opponents. Your AA defense is pretty strong as you have a quite a few number, quite a few of these 20 millimeter guns, 40 millimeter guns, and five inch anti-aircraft dual purpose guns. All of this adds up to a anti-aircraft rating pretty on par with a Cleveland. You don't have the defensive fire cooldown that they do, so you're not gonna be able to disrupt the torpedoes and dive bombers. But at the very least, you're going to be able to make a carrier captain pay for trying to get in close and shoot you up. All right, and f finally, we'll take a look at those main guns. When you first get this ship, the, Cle the New Mexico's 12 14-inch guns have a maximum range of 14.2 kilometers. Your fire control upgrade will push that out to 15.7 and then your main battery plotting room will get you out to a final maximum range of 17.3 kilometers. That actually is not too bad. Even though your speed is slow, so long as you maintain steady progress towards the enemy, you'll be able to do work. In all other respects, these 14-inch guns are fairly standard. Their dispersion is not fantastic at about 233 meters. Their aim time to get on targets, okay, 
about 48.6 seconds with the upgrades I've taken and with a reload speed of about 34 seconds. Not rapid firing, not long range firing. They're fairly just bland guns. They do the job and not much else. Now your secondary battery includes those dual purpose anti-aircraft and anti-ship guns as well as these specifically anti-surface ship 5-inch guns down here. You wind up with 18 of them that all shoot out to a maximum range of 4.2 kilometers, which gives you a pretty good benefit anytime you get in close to an opponent. This can give you a definite advantage when you start brawling and you have all those extra guns firing, setting fires, and just generally doing damage. As far as commander skills go for the New Mexico, it's a battleship. It's all fairly standard. For Tier 1, you take Ship Survivability to reduce the time to repair, fire, extinguish, and flooding. Uh, tier 2, I take Expert Marksman to increase the traverse speed of your main guns, as well as fire prevention. Just, again, lower that risk of fire. You're going to spend enough time on fire. Don't help the enemy cruisers out. For Tier 3, I go ahead and get Superintendent. I like having those extra charges on the uh, health recovery. In general, I tend to find that I survive usually long enough to make use of all of them. And that's a good extra uh, wad of hit points for your ship. Uh, for the fourth tier, yeah, there's honestly not a whole lot down here that I'm really overly fond of. Survivability Expert, for example, only gives you another 2400 HP for the ship. Advanced Firing Training is not too bad, mostly increasing the range of your anti-aircraft guns but uh, and your secondaries probably where I'd go uh, personally is for advanced firing training and demolition expert if you're firing a lot of HE as a battleship all I can tell you is you're doing it wrong for the fifth tier of skills I would almost certainly go with concealment expert to try to lower that detection range even farther um, but that's in general how I'd set it all up all right that is the ship in port so let's go take a look at how she handles in some gameplay all right, the first bit of gameplay we have here is on a Tier 6 Maximum match on the New Dawn map. So far, things have gone, eh, normal. And here I am trying to light this Fuso up. But if you look down at the mini-map, oh, something has been spotted. Can you see it? Can you tell what it is? Open your eyes, you tunnel visioning tomato. And no. It takes the destroyer spotted warning and then the upcoming torpedo alarm to actually get my attention. So, get a good solid hit on the Fuso, and ho, oh, hello, Kamikaze R is taking a hero run at me. I set my secondaries to start opening fire on him, and I keep turning, but I shift back to the right, because if I keep turning to the port, I'm just going to give him the flat broadside of my ship to torpedo. So I keep coming left, or coming right, hard, hard. I don't know what he's doing with his torpedoes, there they are. Take one, manage to scrape the paint of my hole with the other. The secondaries finish him off, and one more. So, six total torpedoes, and I only took two. So, I don't think that's too bad. <laughs> and I even thank the kamikaze for the smoke screen that he gave me. Of course, now I'm a battleship with an island and a smoke screen between him and the rest of the team. So, at this point, <laughs> I slow down. I even go into reverse a little bit, trying to take advantage and well if you're just going to invite it alrighty far be it for me to decline that invitation <laughs> alright and now uh, I just back up into the smoke screen and sit here between it behind it and the island and now it's just time to farm some damage off of this Fuso and this poor New York uh, overall I think right there the new that was a good example of the New Mexico's maneuverability I was able to shift my turn quickly enough that I was able to get my bow onto him and really ruin his torpedo shot at me. Uh, I think in most any other battleship, I probably would have eaten at least one or two more of those torpedoes. Also, with the New Mexico's torpedo damage reduction, even though I did take two hits, they really weren't all that bad. So, let's move on to the next battle. Alright, our next battle here is on Fault Line, and once again, I'm top tier. I'm heading over towards the 9 and 0 line just because I really don't like taking the New Mexico over to the 2-3 line. The 2-3 line lends itself to long-range engagements, and that's just not where the New Mexico shines. It's a good way to get yourself picked apart 
and not actually be able to do anything in return. So I spy the Arizona, who is flying, who is just chugging along broadside onto me. Hear the torpedo warning and check it. Line up my shot, and shots out. It's actually a pretty good volley. Everything just goes right exactly where it's supposed to, and there we go. Got one bounce, two good solid hits on them. I actually did do some damage here, but for whatever reason, the game didn't seem to record it. All right, now our Congo is in the middle of a hero run towards that uh, Nuremberg, the Cleveland, as well as a Texas and that Arizona, all of which are closing in on it. I'm not sure what this guy thought he was going to accomplish, but uh, it's not much. Now you can see that Marblehead is sitting over there, not really wanting to dive in with the Congo. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish, but yeah, I can't give him any support. He's got, he's over there hidden behind uh, the ridge line, and all of the people attacking him are behind the ridge line as well. All I can do is keep on steaming towards him. Now the good news is that our destroyers swept the west side of this ridge, so I know I'm fairly clean and I don't really have to worry about anybody coming through the slot to put torpedoes into me. I've also got the Marblehead watching out for me. Marblehead's doing what he can, but what he can is not much. Not with those big American battleships coming towards him bow on. Alright. And right now I'm just trying to put uh, get into the slot as fast as I can. I want to try to offer this guy some support. I want to try to back him up because right now, even though that Congo is not really dishing out a whole lot of damage, what he is doing is he's keeping the rest of their team from getting down here and actually getting into this pass so they're not being able to contest it. So, taking his shots and, yep, Arizona gets them. But, there we go. Broadside on. Adjust the fire. He's turning in a little bit. So I adjust and shots out. Alright, now at this point my whole goal is to keep a good angle and just start pushing this pass to try to get as much uh, to get in here and dominate this side of the map. Alright, <laughs> looking out for the marble head, dropping speed so that I don't ram him in the side. Right now he is my only support over here. Closest thing I got are a couple destroyers over on the six line. All right, he's about to slip behind this mountain, so I'm not going to get a shot at him. But here comes a Texas. Now this Texas turns in on me, and in all honesty, I probably should have switched over to high explosive. Uh, a bow on Arizona or a bow on Texas, I'm just not likely to be doing a whole lot of damage to him, as you can see right there. So I really should have switched to high explosive, but yeah. What can I say? I'm not, uh, I'm not that awesome. Still a bit of a tomato myself. But anyways, getting my bow pointed towards this Texas. I drop speed because there's no real reason at this point to close. This is effectively point blank range for a battleship. So swing out, get my rear turrets into action, and he's coming dead on. So just shots out once again. Do a little bit of pretty decent damage on there. Three good penetrating hits. But I'm now taking fire from the Nuremberg as well as the Arizona and the Texas. So it's hurting. But I'm bow on to everybody so it's really not doing that much damage to me. This really exemplifies the New Mexico's armor. I'm just shrugging off all these hits. Uh, the fire is honestly doing more damage to me than the armor piercing rounds. Once again, kick the stern out so that I can get all my guns firing. And... I'm aiming a little bit higher just because I'm trying to put some of his four gun turrets out of action and got one of them right there. All right, now at this point, I realize this guy is getting a lot closer than he probably needs to as our secondaries start to open up. And yeah, I'm starting to get a little nervous here. Uh, still taking more fire coming in from that Arizona and the Nuremberg, but still not much happening. Yep, and at this point, I know what he's doing. He's coming in, he's gonna try for a ram. Given our relative health, I kind of see why, but since he had backup, I probably wouldn't have done it myself. Hit him hard and get get into the turn, trying to avoid him as best I can. Secondaries are still working him over, and there's some shots from that marble head, which helped me finish him off with the secondaries. There's a close quarter expert. 
<laughs> now, the, right now, I'm about to run right into the cliff, so I just go right on into the turn, which is not for, not a bad idea. Let my uh, damage repair work on its cooldown, get my gun turrets turned around, get ready for the rest of the fight. And there the Marblehead's taking more fire than I'd like to, but there's not really anything I can do about it at the moment. He gave me some very good support in this battle, uh, doing as best as he could in that little Tier 5 cruiser. Now, I do know there's a Nuremberg over there, so I have to be careful because the Nurembergs love to pop out from behind this ridge and try to torpedo people that come through here. Well, anybody with torpedoes likes to try to pull that. But right now, I've got my gun turrets turned around, and I am unfortunately pretty much broadside. So I'm going to try to keep this turn up and get my armor angled. So I'm ready to take on these other two guys. Now, I'm going to guess that some of my other, sh uh, maybe some of that destroyer to the west got this spot. Keep into the turn. And again, I'm very concerned about getting torpedoed right here. So I gun it and I straighten out. Uh, yep, there we go. There's the Arizona. He looks like he is almost dead in the water. And as you can see from the shots, yeah, he pretty much is. And there's that Nuremberg going for his torpedo run. So I start turning away from him to get my guns into action. Shots out and broadside to a battleship, so that is a paddling. He takes two citadels, and there goes 80% of his health in one shot. Now the Marblehead focuses fire on him, and some of my compatriots take him out. So now it's just me and this Arizona. Now this Arizona didn't seem to pay me much attention. Uh, either from not wanting to shoot into a New Mexico at short range with his armor angled or what, but he kept his fire up on some of our cruisers trying to do the best he could to take them out while ignoring me. Meanwhile, avoiding the torpedoes that I knew were coming from the Nuremberg, I managed to run myself aground, but <laughs> torpedoes didn't have the range on them anyways. All right, so coming in to dock with the island. Yep, there we go. Hit. Take my shots over at the Arizona. And again, this really should have been high explosive because you can see how many rounds are just bouncing right off of his armor. Same as for me. Now, the Marblehead does what he can, which is fire his torpedoes to this Arizona. But what the end result of this is going to be is it's going to force the Arizona to turn into me and again, give me nothing but his bow to shoot at, which is not terribly useful. But even while I'm sitting here on the beach, he's just not interested in taking any shots at me. He's keeping up the fire on my Cleveland and Marblehead here on my team. Looks like he's thinking about it, but once again, just all those bounces right off the end, right off of his armor aren't accomplishing much. And now I'm starting to get sideways to his guns. But I'm still trying to back off of the beach and get some maneuvering room so that I can move. Alright, secondaries are opening up, but once again he turns his attention back to those cruisers, which is just bad news. Alright. And the first shots, once again, more bounces. But and here's the funny thing, since the from the rear, much better angle, and I get the kill. Alright this point just wait for the fires to go out and this game would go on to be a victory for our team wound up being a pretty successful game for me as well probably the one thing I'd take away from this match and the reason I picked it is it just shows shows you how tough the New Mexico's armor is I faced down an Arizona and a Texas and both of them were able to do very little to me uh, both of them just consistently bounced off the bow of my ship as long as I kept it onto them. And they didn't really get much done. I mean, it cost them, both of them were very high health when the engagement started and took them out, took them both out. As you can see, a victory with 88,000 damage done, 2,000 XP. Not a bad result, honestly. But uh, that's what kind of results you're going to get out of a New Mexico. You can bully those kind of situations where you have a tight, uh, close-range fight, and you can take it, and you can win with it. And that's one of the main reasons why I love this ship. So that's the New Mexico. After a disappointing string of ships like the South Carolina and the New York, the New Mexico is where the United States battleship line finally feels like you're driving a battleship. 
You've got the armor to press forward and go after the enemy, and guns that, while not spectacular, will certainly get the job done if anybody gives you their broadside. The New Mexico is a brawler extraordinaire and currently my absolute favorite ship in this game. See you next time.